<clears throat> well, first, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Um, uh, very excited to get nine wins for our guys, but more importantly, the fans, uh, administration, all the people that support us on a daily daily grind here. It's pretty awesome to, to put us in this position. Um, I also want to thank Wrigley, everybody that made this day happen. This is obviously a very special moment. I've been here many times over my life um, and never in this uh, type of format. So I thought our guys were really excited. We got off the bus yesterday. You could see their excitement and uh, the, the uh, eagerness to get to this game. They really... I thought all week, you know, we actually have fall break going on on our campus, so our guys don't have classes. So I was a little, uh, uh, not concerned, but I just kind of harped on them all week about staying in your routine, living your method, uh, doing what we did. And I thought we actually practiced really good Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We want to put ourselves in a good position on this day to, to get to nine wins and see where it can go. Um, uh, you know, just a fun day overall. Um, uh, and, and, you know, I don't know what the future holds. I just know that I'm excited about this football team. I think we're a team that can play with anybody in the country. I love the... The fact that, you know, we got, um, you know, uh, three losses on the year. We, we you know, Penn State takes uh, today and wins their opportunity. We're probably lost to Oregon and Penn State, the two teams that will play in the Big Ten championship game. We lost to a Minnesota team uh, on really a, a, a one-play possession game there at the end. Um, uh, the sack fumble obviously still grains in my head, but, uh, you know, just, just a, a couple things go our way and, I think we're easily in the top 15, maybe in the top 10. So I, I, I'm excited to see exactly where we can go and what we can do. A um, couple guys injured today, uh, brought Caleb Patterson with us. He just didn't get cleared. So I thought Jaheim Clark really popped up today and did some really good things. Fun to see Malachi Hood pop in and, you know, obviously uh, Dylan Rosie has been out, but I thought James Crudes, uh, Malachi, Ryan Mead, uh, just a really uh, a good group of kids that have uh, uh, stepped up in a big way. And then uh, uh, JoJo Hayden today, especially, you know, stepping in. Uh, Seth Coleman has put a lot on Gabe and, and uh, Alec Bryant, but it was fun to see JoJo come in there and make some plays happen. So uh, with that, open up for questions. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, Aiden, he's just one of those uh, guys. That he, I'll go back to even last spring. He really had a really good spring. I just – you could see him getting uh, uh, just a better poise and understanding of what we ask him to do. And then, unfortunately, in that opener on that big run down the right boundary uh, – tweaked his, uh, uh, I believe it was his hamstring, and it kind of took about three or four weeks, and then a, uh, then again in the middle of the season. So I, I remember three weeks ago, really when we came out of our second bye, I'm like, man, Aiden looks good, and he's been feeling it. He's been feeling it. That play last week when he did that nice bounce play, I thought today would be a day that could happen. And then, um, you know, today some of those turned into big home run hits. We've kind of been waiting on all year. Um, you know, I, I felt coming into the year, obviously I don't make predictions, but like, I felt really good about this group. I liked the way we were, we were kind of, um, gelling in fall camp. I, I thought, uh, the, our returning players, you could see the growth of Luke Altmeyer. Um, I thought we were going to be better up front offensively. I thought the addition of Zakari and the growth of Pat, now you have two perimeter players that really make a difference. I'm, I'm telling you, Colin Dixon, if I could sign five, five Colin Dixons a year, I'd do it. Like he's just an incredibly intelligent, very, very disciplined, very talented football player. Uh, Hank Beatty just continues to show up. And then on the defense side of the ball, I, I knew I was going to see growth out of Aaron from year one to year two. And I just uh, I, I couldn't be happier with our defensive staff. I thought those guys really have uh, molded and adjusted to what, what our, our guys' limitations are and maximize our strengths. Um, and then I, I got to tell you, uh, uh, between uh, Robbie Disher and Chris Hurd in the special teams world, I thought they've just come in week in and week out. I thought we've gained an advantage in the special teams battle uh, pretty much in every game. And that's really fun to watch. So I thought we'd have a chance to win nine. Um, you know, it's been a long time since uh, uh, Illinois won nine, like you said, and, and, and hopefully this is more of the norm uh, than not. I remember last year walking off that field in this game, you know, it was like doomsday for a lot of people. Um, and it, I just kind of sat there and smiled because I know what we were capable of doing, and that's uh, it's been good. I think our, our core um, returning players have been good, but we really hit gold on some of the polo guys, right? Like some of those guys really see so like Dennis Briggs. T. Rod Edwards has been here forever to see him. Uh, today, I was able to give him a captainship and a guy that came in and for two years just kind of put in, did his work, and then this year has really manifested into something special. It's been awesome. Yeah. Yeah. They did. They did a good job down in the red area. Uh, we knew what they were – I thought our guys were really wired in. You know, they, they did change it up and threw both quarterbacks at us. Uh, so, we kind of – I thought Aaron did a nice job of understanding that moment and, and playing into it. But – Again, just uh, another really good, resilient message from our guys. No matter what happens, you still have one next play, right? And, uh, and then to come away with that missed uh, field goal at the end, I thought that was a good momentum swing and then to score right away coming out. Well, you, did, you thought you would be better last year. 
Uh huh. You know, um, you know, two different seasons. I would tell you last year I was uneasy in fall camp. I mean, obviously we had a lot of good players, but I just didn't know if we uh, connected the way we did this year in fall camp. I think that's so much that I've learned now uh, through my 16 years. You know, you can have all the talent in the world, but if it doesn't gel the way you want it to and, and then put it together, it doesn't usually manifest. And uh, uh, unfortunately it didn't last year, but I knew, I knew during even during the spring and the summer and the fall, uh, the way these guys just kind of handle their business, not much phased them. Um, and then anytime you have a guy uh, uh, at the quarterback position that you know feels good and is very confident, I think that breeds into everybody offensively, defensively. So, yeah, um, there's pressure every week. My job, man, I mean, it, it doesn't matter if we're playing Northwestern or, or the week when we were playing Penn State and Oregon, who were, you know, ranked top five in the country. Like, the pressure has got to come from within. If I start responding to pressure that comes from anywhere else, I'll never go anywhere, right? Like, the only pressure you have is the ones that you create yourself. And, and for me, that motivates me to do certain things, but it doesn't really change what I do. Yeah. Huge. Yeah, you know, I mean, this week will be a lot of, uh, I'm sure, conversations, right? Like, it's I'm not naive. You know, I've told our guys all along that we have 12 guaranteed opportunities together. We've talked a lot about the dash this year, and um, it's been a lot of fun with these guys. But... Uh, the world that we know in college football, you know, is, is going to bring, I'm sure, some conversations this week that, uh, you know, is going to change the outlook of our team. But on the flip side, we don't have many, you know, I don't know if there's a kid that left our program a year ago that has gone anywhere and done anything, right? Like, and, and nothing against kids that have left, but like what we do here, I think, and now we have kids, we've actually had some guys reach out to us that would like to come back. Um, it doesn't surprise me, but it, it's just another great indicator of, I think, what we do, how we do it. Um, I, I say it all the time, but like Josh, uh, in administration, they allow us to do things with our kids that I know they appreciate. Um, we have guys here that have been at other programs, elite programs, who talk about when they come here, they learn things more in three months than they've learned in three years somewhere else, right? And and that means a lot to me. Um, uh, and and it and it does, I think, indicate what Illinois can become. Uh huh. Well, yeah, and first thing you have to do is respect them. I think when I got here, I don't think there was respect for Northwestern. They beat them six years in a row, and and I, I saw quotes from players that weren't with us really anymore, but I'm like, man, you got to – before you can beat someone, you got to respect someone, right? And and I had a tremendous amount of respect for Fitz uh, and what he did in his program, and then obviously Coach Braun last year, what he did, it was just uh, – I could see, I knew today was going to be, you know, you, you look this, this game uh, two weeks ago here – or. Yeah, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, here in Wrigley against Ohio State, there was a 0-0 first quarter, and they scored first in the second. Uh, um, now, obviously, kind of got away from them at the end, but it's a very opportunistic team. They're tough. Um, not a lot of things that we believe in. I think they believe in, in in Northwestern. So, yeah, I respect Northwestern just like I would respect Purdue and the rivalries that we have. Aiden Lockley is one of those local guys. That's yeah. Kind of made it progress for your team. How much is how nice is it to see him have that guy? You know, it's good. To, it's fun to see the Illinois kids have success. I said it in my opening presser. It wasn't just trying to, you know, win the press conference. I believe it. You know, great organizations are built from within, right? And I think that Illinois has to be built by Illinois players. Um, and when you got a guy like Aiden Lawfrey, but you, you can't just ignore Hank Beatty, right? Right down the street at, at, at Rochester. Hank Beatty has probably had just as much of our success here in November as anybody. And, and um, those those little things mean a lot. I think Josh Cruz and James Cruz, they have two brothers starting on the team that went nine and three. Um uh, obviously, Olin Cruz in Chicago means a lot uh, to, to what it is, and they represent his name, represent our name very, very well. So there's just a lot of really good feel-good feel, feel good things. Um, I'm super excited to kind of take a deep breath, but I think this week is going to be absolute pandemonium and chaos because uh, I think, uh, you know, you're going to start to have some reactions. I, I know other kids are contacting us, so I know it's, I'm not naive to the fact it's not going on in our building, but um, I'm excited to get to – we'll probably work – two, maybe three days this week with our young kids. And that's probably one of the most enjoyable things for me as a coach is to get to work with these guys that maybe they felt we haven't really been paying attention to them, but now they'll get a lot of attention here this week. Um, we won't find out what's going on until next Saturday, so or next Sunday. Um, but I'm telling you what, man, I mean, it, I, I know everybody's going to poo-poo it, but, you know, Brett's been doing an unbelievable job with these 9-3 and three teams and the history of, of what that could possibly be. And, and uh, listen, I wish we could have – gotten one more win right but uh you know we lost to two really really talented football teams in Penn State and, and uh, uh uh Oregon that are 
you know, top four in the country and um, lost to a Minnesota team that was a rivalry game. I think the uh, the heartbreaker of the whole thing was just, you know, getting that close at the end and uh, not getting in the end zone. But um, it's a good sign of where we are. I mean, to think that Illinois, from when I came here four years ago, is knocking on the door of a college football playoffs is pretty awesome. Luke. 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 Yeah, I, I thought our guys really were opportunistic. Mac Rosetti is another good – he's kind of northwest central Illinois, I guess he'd be. Um, uh, uh, but Mac uh, is just another great example. He attacked that ball. A couple of ours bounced off our hands. I know Matt had one in the first half, and then there was another one on a tip ball. But um, I thought our guys defensively attacked the football really, really good. Uh, and then I, I was literally right next to Torrey Cox. I saw him sit down. I knew we were bringing pressure. So Torrey knew it as well. He sat down on that route and expanded it. And, you know, here's a guy that, uh, you know, came into our, our system, um, really kind of took him at the last minute, had a scholarship available. I really loved the story of his dad. I had his, a very good friend of mine, Paul Rhodes, coached his dad in, in, at, at Pitt and said, you're going to – this kid's got the DNA from his father. He's going to be an exceptional kid. And I think the only thing better than one T-Cox is have two T-Coxes. Uh, so it might be another one coming. You know, some impactful plays from Malachi Yeah. those guys – Malachi is very talented. You know, he he really just got kind of cleared right before we started fall camp, so we really didn't know what. Um, and then Arch, you know, who came in in the in the spring, Archie never really been around him. But I I think our strength coaches right away uh, during the course of the summer, like hey, they're like Brad, hey, Malachi Hood is probably your most explosive, dynamic, athletic linebacker, right? Just haven't played a lot of snaps, so uh, excited to see him and Cruzzi really really uh, continue to grow and develop. Ryan, we got one more game with Ryan, and then. Uh, Dylan Rosiak come in the building every day. He's just got a grin from year to year. I know he's uh, crushed that he can't be here, but he sees these guys playing and he's happy for them. Yeah. I keep looking at your Packer hat in Wrigley Field. That's like making me zoom out. Uh, uh, uh. Um, it was really cool seeing up there in the locker room. Uh, Brandon Lloyd was here, uh, flew all the way in. I thought, that kind of speaks volumes of what Illinois is all about, right? Here's a guy I just met for the first time. Obviously, I'd seen him compete and play, uh, but he contacted us earlier in the week and said he'd love to come and recognize Pat if he, when he broke the record. He didn't say if, he said when he broke the record. So I gave Brandon the ball, and then he gave the ball to Pat in the locker room uh, up there. It was a pretty cool moment for, for, for hopefully greatness to recognize greatness. Um, Pat Bryan literally broke down the team afterwards with nine wins, said let's try to get to ten. Um, uh, so it kind of shows you where his mindset is. I think this is a, a team that really enjoys the success uh, being around each other, and I'm excited for for, the, for what the future can be, not just right now, but I'm telling you, fellas, we've got a really young football team. We're one of the youngest youngest teams in the Power Four. Uh, the core of our football team, when I make my 64 uh, or my 74-man travel roster, it's all basically sophomores and juniors who will turn into juniors and seniors next year. And to me, as a head coach, that's very exciting. We'll finish with Steve here. First of all, how does the – Florida sound on an ATV game. Yeah. And then, you know, you missed that last Rose Bowl at Wisconsin. Got a chance to go for a 10th win. You yeah. Know, it's a New Year's Day or New Year's Eve game against our banner program from the SEC. Is this sort of the biggest moment maybe that you had since the last time you coached in the Rose Bowl? Um, as a head coach? Yeah. Well, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. This is, this is big. I felt it all week. Um, I knew when we were coming out of that second bye week, if we could – put together three weeks and get to nine wins, it'd be pretty awesome. Uh, today was a little chilly. It's the first time I've worn socks, I think, since Russell Wilson's wedding, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so it was like, I don't wear socks very often. I threw them on today. My little toes were, were numb uh, uh, walking in the building. So uh, I think for our players, um, obviously, we, we uh, uh, got to go to the Rely Quest uh, a couple of years ago. But I think um, to know how close they were, I really kind of made that statement to them on Sunday to try and leave no doubt that, um, you know, you were you're right on the cusp. Uh, of being a top 15 team, you know, and, and um, unfortunately we didn't do enough to get to that point, uh, uh, maybe from from the perspective of the outside world, but I know what when, when people throw on our film, they will see how we play. And, and that to me speaks volumes. I've kind of had my moment. I appreciate the question, but I want Illinois to feel what Illinois should feel, right? This isn't a mistake. It didn't happen by chance. This happened through a lot of really hard work and a lot of really good dedication. Uh, to not just people in the Smith Center, but people in the Department of Athletics, uh, Chancellor Jones, all kinds of people that have made Illinois and our fans too, man. Like, I mean, I'm serious. Like, uh, we had a Michigan game this year for the first time since I've been here. We had a home field advantage, right? And that team that we beat pretty handedly 
just went and beat Ohio State. So to win in this conference, uh, uh, to be a team that we potentially be in the top five of a new 18-team league, to, to say that Illinois is there, I think is a pretty big-ass statement.